Hey everyone, I'm Nick and welcome back to the channel. Today we're wrapping up some final details on my supercharged Range Rover. We've done a lot of work on this truck already and we have it running smoothly, so now it's time to make it look as nice as it runs. We need to replace the rear bumper, a front fender, and a cracked window. And there's also some really faded paint to work on too, so let's get to it. Now, part of getting this back on the road, Let's put a new bumper on it, because this one's all sorts of messed up. Fortunately, part of the job's already been done for us, because this is already disconnected. So, we don't have to worry about that. But, on this side, it's attached normally still. So we've got our clip right here. And our two bolts. This clip is the kind that has the center part that you can pull down. I'm gonna try to do that carefully. Work it from both sides a bit. There we go. See right here. You pull the, the center out. It allows this to squeeze back together. Normally you're gonna to wanna to look out here these tabs like pop in here but this is already released so it just fell out we do have to remove four bolts well there's supposed to be four one there one here which is already popped out and is bent one here which is in and then the last one back there which is also already gone that's loose the last step is to pull this up and there's going to be five bolts under here. Now with this panel out, we can see the five bolts. I think these are eights. One in the center. And then two on either side. And these are the last bolts that are holding it in, so it's gonna be a tight fit, so I think I can get a little ratcheting wrench maybe in there. Hopefully this one will come out. It's kind of rusty, so. Now these are all out. It's a little tough for a couple of them because this kind of got pushed up. So they're really kind of wedged under the, the tailgate. We should be able to pull it off now. Oh, okay. Somebody put a screwdriver, a screw in there. Uh. And then we have this connector here, which is for all the parking sensors. That's it. We're gonna have to bang these back into shape. Oh, this is all bent up. Uh -oh. So we need to replace this. As you can see, instead of being vertical, it's angled in, probably because whatever hit this truck, hit underneath, and it kind of pushed this up. So, to remove this, it actually mounts through here and into the body. And in the body, you have access to two of them in here in the spare wheel well, so you can remove the trunk floor. But as you can see, there's only two accessible from here. So next, we actually have to remove this trim panel, which is pretty simple. You turn these and you pull them out. And then this same thing, turn, pull it out. Same thing on the other side, there's two more. Boom. And then we have the uh, anchor hook, D-ring. That is, I believe, an eight hex head, which I will go get. And essentially we're gonna be removing this, this panel and what's underneath, this and what's underneath, and that will give us access inside to the other two nuts. Okay, so these panels, they're a little tucked in behind the seal, and it might actually be easier to remove this first. So remove the bottom panel here. This should pop out. Remove the 
top panel here. Well, it's uh, good to know that this is right here. And okay. Now, this piece. Bottom. Boom. Now on both sides we have panels that screw in. And there's a 10 millimeter here, here, and here. And then there's a clip right here. Now this clip is actually, has already been removed, but I would suggest using some sort of trim tool like this or the kind that you pry off. And on this side, it's actually still there. So right there. And same thing, one 10 millimeter here, one here, and one here. Okay, it went flying, that's not great, I'll have to go find it. This does appear to be the type that has a two part. So if you can pull this out, it should slide out. So this is gonna have to lift up and then over kind of stuck under this panel back there. So you can remove this clip here, maybe let this move a little more. Now, if you're not able to remove the panel, you actually could work here, reach in down there, get the two other nuts, move it back, get the two nuts right here. You should be good to go. I'm gonna do the other side. Now on this panel, there are actually two clips back here that you'll have to pop out. To make it a little easier for yourself, you can just reach over here when you remove the trick. Pop that up. There we go. Just stuck. So see right here, there are the four nuts. And these are 17s. Here you can see a lock nut, got the little blue stuff. I'm leaving these on just barely so that the bumper doesn't fall out. Just in case it doesn't fall on me or anything. You do have to work around the wires, so just make sure you don't damage them. compare this these are the bottom bumper mounts they're sh turned up almost all the way here and really you can see they're both laying on the ground and these are pointed towards me and these are pointed straight up it's pretty pretty bad now we're gonna have a good good surface to mount our bumper to so let's uh, start doing the reverse. I'm gonna pop this in. It's gonna just pop in through here. Same thing over there. Okay, so I've started these threaded on by hand. I'm gonna bring it in, snug it up, and then we'll torque it to spec. So I'll just. Now we're gonna torque them down, they're 45 newton meters, which is 33 foot pounds. Now we can put the interior back together. You put the tie down ring. And it goes to 25 newton meters, which is 18 foot pounds. A little tough to get that back over it. If you ever can't remember which way these go in, it's actually keyed. There's a little hole for this little point to go into. It'll only go in one way. 
And then back there. Just another one click. There we go. And this one has the hinges to put in. Boom. All right. Now it's time to put the bumper back on. So here I've put, loosely put in the screws on the bottom because the way this is, it'll actually slot onto it and that'll help us support it while we align everything. And it'll actually help us position it and center it on the truck. So those five will do that. One thing you have to plug in is your parking sensor harness. But the way it's gonna attach is these five holes are going to line up here and you're going to screw in the screws, the sides here, it's a little damaged but it should be okay, we'll clip in up here, so here, here, and here, and same on the other side. These are the other clips for the edge. And the last thing is actually these, we have uh, actually this bolt. It's probably supposed to go in here, but we have one screw hole here, which will go right there. This one, which will probably have to pull this out to sandwich that in here. And then right up here is one last opening. And I believe that will wrap over the wheel liner. Then over this, we have the trim piece, which clips in, I think it's 12 clips, and the seven on the back, a little clips on the back or big clips on the outside. This one's a little broken. So I have to probably glue these back on or something like that. But that will cover up those top screws. All right, this panel has shifted a bit. Yeah, it's gonna be a little tough. Is that good? I think it's good enough. Though. Yeah. This one's also a little squished, this panel. So these are reattached. So you use TA glue to glue these on and use a instant set spray. So it holds really well and then these staples just get melted in and it should provide some extra structure those drop in um you bring it down a little further a little more just a tiny bit more that's it and that's the bumper replaced So we're going to replace this fender because in the accident it looks like it got pushed into something and bringing this back is not really not really realistic right now. But to do that we have to remove this panel here so that we can remove this panel so that we can remove this panel. And to do that we have to remove the wheel liner. Now while we're on the wheel liner. It's a good time to point out that this is what happens when your tires are too big. This is too big and it rubs when you turn. Actually it even rubbed a little bit here so use the right size tires. And our shock here is R0 which is nice and our big 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 supercharged brakes. All right so to get the wheel liner out there's a nut here. There's supposed to be a nut here. I've actually already removed these two bolts or screws I guess. In mine it was one Phillips for some reason this is not what it's supposed to be. And one 8 mil which is fine. Some that here, some screws, one here, and I think that is it. Oh yes there are bolts here, here, and here, and here. This is on pretty secure. Let's take these out, get the wheel liner out, and we'll be right back. 
So right here, there's two screws. And these are actually that sensor right here. So we're gonna unplug this connector here. This is the connector right here. This little tab on the back that if you pull it up, it'll allow you to pull this out. And just keep this out here. There's some sort of drain or pipe here. Hopefully it won't be attached anywhere, but we should be able to get the head, the liner out. There you go. Oh, there's another nut back here. In there. And then two more screws a little further back. And there's another one under here. Once the wheel liner is out, we can remove this panel. And to do that, there's a eight millimeter screw right here on the front. So we're gonna undo that. And then we'll be able to pop this panel out. It has like clips further back that slot in in that area. But this has to come out. With the door open, and grab a little bit here, pull it out. And then how did it go on the bottom? Yeah, it clips in also. Yeah. So the top clips are like this. And actually this, if you loosen it, might come out, but I wouldn't risk it. The cracked one on the parts truck. Then down here, there's this kind of clip. On this side, it came out of the, the mounting bracket. And then this is actually stuck somewhere else. Oh no, it's holding on the, on the step. Yeah, this is my Christmas tree clip here. Now before removing this panel, we have to remove the vent. Intake slash vent. And that is with one 10 millimeter here and another one on the bottom here. Here, as you can see, it's got a couple, not pins, but guides right here. Those guides go into here, those three. And now we can start looking at the screws and bolts that hold this panel in. So we have some along the top, one here, then along the top we have three, right here. Then we have in this area, they're kind of behind some foam there. Well, either you could get them off inside or on the body. And then there's like one more there, and one more down here, and then this bracket right here. The best recommendation is to take these off to pull the fender off, not these, because it will be annoying to realign it to the bottom. Yeah. And then up front, there's a there's at least one, maybe two, right here. So this is one of them. And we'll have to check. So on the other truck, there was a second one up here, I think, but that would be through this opening right here. But we'll have to check. It's a combination of Torx and 10 millimeters in there. If you're looking under this side, you can see there's three more. One there, one here, and the other one back in there, which we have to go through this opening for. So through here, through here, to reach it back there. Now we have these off. We got the four that live back here, and unfortunately, it turns out the uh, this bracket here broke in the impact so we'll have to see about removing it and fixing it or replacing it but we'll have a better idea of how that works once this is off so our next step is the bolts that are in here so in the foam in there and there is one also right here we'll be taking off this one so that everything stays aligned so if you're working in the foam you might want to pull or push the foam with a screwdriver to get the the head of your your socket on there, and then you'll be all right. 
but the phone will also be holding the panel onto the truck so you'll have to push that apart and there's a little bit in here as well on these three standoffs just so now that everything's off this will start coming off here this is going to be held a bit in this area in the middle this is the foam these are the short bolts that hold the panel in over here so this one is one is from here one is from here and then the other three are actually stuck in the foam so they're loose but they'll stay on the in here for now to break this free we what we did last time to get the part off the parts truck was to push on the foam to tear it and so that'll peel it off the body out of the foam there's like two washers on this one for some reason On this truck there's a little connector here, you'll probably want to remove that beforehand for the side marker. So right here, this whole thing came out. I think it mounts on the bumper? I don't even know. It is destroyed. So. Yeah, it's like a bunch of stuff here. This whole thing disintegrated. Maybe part of the bumper? Maybe not. Oh, there's more. <laughs> Jeez. Or is it with the bumper clips into, maybe? Uh, it is with the bumper clips into. I don't know where it attaches on the body, but we'll look on the other truck and figure it out. This is the benefits of having a parts truck. But, yeah, this is home. Yeah, see, these are the alignment um, L brackets. And so the reason we left them on is that this way, Positioning is the same since those those screws down there can only go in one in one spot. So with that in position, the gap here should be good, and everything else should line up. These don't move either, so it should all be good. And then we'll replace that panel. This panel here I'm just kind of clips in here. You can see there's little teeth here and then little spots for them to grab in here. There we go, that's on. We'll see how much is on the replacement fender. I'm gonna scrape this off a bit to make sure we don't have too much interference. We have our replacement panel. We're gonna hang it up. So this piece right here is what this is supposed to look like. And that will probably have to slot into the bumper here. But we're gonna worry about hanging it up first, I think. And we have to slot it in first. This here is where the bumper slides into the fender. And it looks like up here, we still need to come back, I guess? Yeah, back. Yeah. These aren't lining up. Yeah. Okay. What we're probably gonna do is line these up with the marks so that they left on the other truck. That should get us pretty close. That has to go in. I don't know about the back though. The back, that looks no. like it's too far. Yeah, the back has to be out and the front has to be in. Okay. And everywhere else you said it's good? I think, yeah, the rest looks good. It's tight. Good there. 
Yeah. So we're gonna put the side panel back in. Put these clips back in. And I left this loose over here. Make sure we're gonna replace this. See that rust build up on here, so I'm gonna use the one I took out before. Put in here it was Christmas tree clips there and there. This one was already there, I just pushed it in further. And that one I added in because it was missing. If you need clips like this for this and even down here where I replaced it, the assorted set from Harbor Freight is a good option. That's what we're using. It's time to put the wheel liner back in. Liners in. Once that's done, we do need to put this sensor, just plug it back in. That's on the back side. There we go. That's done there. Now, if you remember, this window here is cracked right here, so we're gonna have to replace that before I get this back on the road. Now, unfortunately, I made a mistake when I was moving this truck and lowered the window and raised it. And now it's stuck here, so it's not moving. And I think it actually might have separated from the mounting points inside the door. So, so we're gonna be opening it up before we try to lower it down and that way Hopefully we'll be able to get it out without it dropping in and shattering or something like that. The first step to getting the window out is to take the door panel out. And to do that, there's four screws. We've got one right here, one here, one here, and then there's the last one behind the Land Rover logo right here. So we're gonna have to use a plastic trim tool to pop this out. There you go. It's that little thing hanging in there. And it's right there. And these are all T20s. You're gonna end up with two long ones behind the handle and back here. And a short one by the speaker. I actually think this one back here may be a bigger, a bigger size than T20. So it's T27 here. Now, once you have those screws out, it's actually held in with 14 plastic clips that go around the bottom and then there's actually seven clips holding it at the top that'll it should slide out upwards from you want to be careful as you remove this and pop these out of the door because they can be kind of fragile now this door's been off or they broke in the crash on the outside they're they're all broken here so far some of them are just missing All right, once you get to here, there's, there's gonna be a few connections up here. There's a cable that's gonna connect to the handle and a couple connections for the speakers. And you have to be careful with the little lock. So as we lift up, we're gonna have to watch out for that. This piece will stay on the door. It actually looks like this and it's gonna clip into clips like that all along the top. We're gonna to go up to clear this and then out. We got connectors for the window module and all that. We got our door handle cable in there, but I'm gonna start working on getting these connections removed. For this connector here, this piece has to be pulled out to release it. It's like a little locking guy, and it's for the window switch. All right, so along the back of the door, we've got the screw in the corner behind the logo. We've got one, two, three, and four clips like this. 
they're uh, missing. I think one of them's broken in here. Then we have the other screw down here. We got four along the bottom, and then on the front, we got another one, two, three, four, five. So, you gotta keep those in mind. And then up at the top here, these metal clips hold the top part of the panel. I think they just kind of grab mm -hmm. along this. This is what the door cable release looks like. Just clips in with this. And we've got this set of cable uh, plugs here. These three go to the module here. This is for the mid-range speaker. And your woofer is down here. And then at the bottom, don't forget there's this one for the the door, the light at the very bottom under the, the little storage compartment. Now, if you have an older truck uh, before 2007, there's an airbag that lives here, but after Ford took over, that went away. So the next step for us to reach the window mounts is to remove this foam panel. And there's an opening here that'll allow us to reach that. So when you pull this off, just be careful pulling your wiring through. And I'm actually gonna have to disconnect this speaker as well. That'll let us remove this, so. I think this has been off before. It has. And what you can do is stick it back on. This is just butyl. That was actually on the door. On the door. It did not come off. So. There we go. Yeah, it just looks like it snaps into the yep. door, so. Let's see if we can this is one of the mounting points oh yeah this is all broken in here already let's see uh okay that's why yeah so the the glass broke all in this part right here we have one of those suction cup grabbers and we're gonna try to see how we can move it around i'm gonna reconnect the battery and we'll try to lower we'll try to lower the window so one thing you need to know is if you haven't lowered the window already, you do need a window module. This is actually off the parts truck, but it will allow, it should allow us to lower the window. Because without it, it doesn't want to do it. Oh. <laughs> so it's just detached? Yeah, completely. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess that just means it's held up and we can lower it or raise it once we free it from the corner over there. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, I got this part. I'll have to... Yep. Uh, we're gonna have to vacuum that out. Well, at least it's got the film that holds it together, but... It looks like the only other piece, I think. Fortunately, modern glass has a film that holds it together. And it doesn't look like there's anything else. We're gonna have to loosen these because that's they're probably clamping right now. Yeah, they're oh, clamping well, that this, piece of the glass. This is supposed to come out with the window. And then same thing over here, so. Okay, so we'll get these out next. And so here you can either use a Torx bit or an E socket that'll grab around it, whatever you're comfortable with. I guess it's redundancy if one of them strips. We're just gonna use the E socket because we have it. All right, so next step is to put the window in. The new window, or replacement window, because it's not new. And we're just drop it, we're gonna slide it in, and slot it into these two guys, but we're not gonna tighten them yet, because we have to align it first. So I'm gonna go get the glass, we'll bring it in through here. I'm gonna set it in there, and then we'll move it up and down and do the adjustment. To make it easier to put the window back in, we're actually gonna pull this piece out. We do have to remove that piece. Just clip in. So it comes out of there. 
you could take these off. Be careful, yeah. you don't want to scratch your glass. Yeah. Are we in the right place? Yeah, we're in it. Is it properly aligned? I don't know about that yet, but... I just want to tighten this one a tiny bit. Oh, well, but I was going to say, in, in those ones on the bottom, you know where the, the mark is for the old one? Is yeah. it aligned with that? Yeah. Okay, then, yeah, it should be pretty good aligned. You have to bring it up and down seven times, they say? No, it's just to tighten one of them. No, I just, just loosened it so it wasn't flapping around. Okay. It's still loose. Okay, but it's in there. Yeah, yeah it's in All right. Perfect. I think there? Yep. Oh, and it doesn't surge anymore from just idling. That's true. So those seven runs up and down are per the manual just to make sure it's seated in all the seals properly. 10 Newton meters. Perfect. Feels good back here, yeah. yeah. Looks good. Yeah. Cool. And bring it all the way down. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. When you're installing this, you want to make sure this seal comes over the edge. You want to, be, you want to be careful around this as well. It has to slide behind that. So you may actually want to put this back on first before you put the inner strip. And it goes up along here. Same thing here. And over here also. So we fit some new clips to fill this out. Some off a parts truck and some we had hanging around that are close enough for just two of them. This clip is back in. Now we just have to reconnect everything. So the uh, door handle is going to snap in there. And all the other connectors are mostly up here. And then the one light down here. There's a speaker. The uh, pushing the cam lock will yep. pull it in. Yep. Okay, now I just have to connect the pulse cable. Now I have to carefully make sure we line up all the everything. Oh, it's got the Land Rover projector on the ground. Oh, it does? Look. Oh, well, that makes <laughs> sense considering all that this dude did. Yeah, I get that. It says Land Rover. That's funny. This is from a previous time it was open. It was folded in. Maybe I'll just tuck that material back in there. Clean it up later on. But yeah, big success. Whew. <laughs> this is the way the paint came compared to what it's supposed to look like and this area right here was hand polished with 
Lucat fix it. She restores paint. It is really impressive so far. It just by hand rubbing on this, it went from this to this. I saw him. He's a, he's on YouTube. Shout out to this dude. This this stuff is amazing. He shows this on cars that are really sun damaged, and so just sort of doing the same. Take this. And you can just go up and down, applying light pressure. This is just a towel, not even a microfiber. No, it's just a cherry cloth towel. We can already see a uh, difference, already reflective. The difference, like. You can feel it, it's smooth, and this is like, you can feel that it faded. Wow, yeah. Some people would wet sand, some people would cut, and actually, right after this, I'm gonna try here. One, I wanna see what happens if we use a polish on this now that it's been cleaned with Blue Cat. And I'm gonna try this. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's still work to do, but boy, that's insane. Yeah, and this is, with a little more work, it gets to this. Super smooth. For the machine polish, we're using a rotary buffer with McGuire's Ultra Cut Compound on a coarse foam pad to start. Because I think this is getting stuck on the oxidation. Mm. As the area you didn't touch at all. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, you can actually still see the oxidation there. This area is nice, and I think with the orbital, it's actually going to come up really well. You might have to go over this by hand with the product. Yeah, it actually looks like the Lou Cat Fix it is more effective, and then you can buff it out. Yeah. That's probably, especially in a small area, not the one I want to work with. Yeah. But I mean, even just by hand, you can see you can get something almost as good. You don't have to worry about special tools or skills, which is nice. Then we did the rest with the same compound and a dual action buffer. This is what the good front door looked like. Now let's work our way back. It's so much better. It turns out this whole area that we had to do was actually resprayed at some point in the truck's life. And it looks like it actually reacted with the paint underneath and oxidized over time after that. But we were able to bring it back pretty well, or really well. So what we ended up doing is hand apply the look at fix it and then go over with a cutting ultra cut compound with the dual action. This is the orange six inch cutting pad from Harbor Freight. And it looks really good. You can, you can still see some hints of where the paint reacted, but it's glossy now and not matte, which is really good. Yeah, so next step, we're gonna apply the wax that comes, uh, that's also from the cut. And we're gonna see how that really just brings it all together. After the wax, it looks way better than it used to. So that's the cosmetic work done. The truck's looking great, and we're ready to take it in for its salvage inspection, which is the last step before I can drive it on the road. Next week, I'm taking a little break from this truck because I need to fix my S-Class right here, so stay tuned for that. In the next video on this truck, we'll be driving it and you'll find out what it actually costs to get this cheap Range Rover back on the road. Leave your guesses down in the comments. If you're enjoying this series, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss seeing this Range Rover back on the road. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.